So you guys like totally sick about hearing about contests yet or, or what? There's been quite a few, so. <laughs> well, thanks for the intro, very generous. Um, so there's many ways you can run contests and uh, hopefully I can give you some ideas and, and ways you can do it in your own business, whether you use our app or not, it's up to you, but of course I'd love to see you on our app. <laughs> um, so first of all, let's just talk about why contests. I'm sure it's been drilled into your head now over the last 48 hours, but uh, it's essentially just a really powerful way to get leads and likes. And I say that specifically because not every contest focuses on leads. Um, and so we'll talk about that in a minute because I think that's a common misconception on why you run a contest. Uh, it turns users into brand ambassadors because it actually gives them a reason to go out and tell their friends about why they love you. It gives them a, you know, a remembrance of why your service is awesome, why your product is awesome. And if you do your prize correctly, it turns them all into evangelists for what you're doing. It's also a fun way to reward your users and find new ones. Um, you know, when people enter the contest, usually it's for a chance to you know, win something that you're offering within your product suite that either they've had before, they've wanted, just haven't been able to pull the trigger on. And it's a way to essentially run a marketing campaign without having to be salesy because you're rewarding your existing users and rewarding them again when they share you know, the good word right, about what you're doing. Um, and as we talked about through almost every, uh, you know, every, every person who's been up here is it greatly increases your campaign efficiency because of the virality of the share page, right? If you can get a 20% or 30% bump on the people that are coming through your campaign, that's 20 to 30% less you're having to spend for every lead that comes through your campaign. So it just really changes the game in terms of efficiency. And there's really high tolerances. How many of you get sick of being marketed to from even brands you love sometimes, you just get sick of you know, them saying, please buy this, new thing here, you know, buy, 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 buy. Uh, by doing a contest, it serves your business purposes without tiring the user because it can be fun, it can be creative, and it can actually vary from contest to contest. So, okay, great, you're on board with contests, maybe, but you know, why should you listen to me? Um, you know, my name's Travis, I live in beautiful Seattle, and Yes, that's a couple beer bottles on the roof because that's how you should do it. <laughs> um, so we, I started Contest Domination about a year ago and it started as just like the simple WordPress plugin because I'd been doing marketing for several years. I actually started my first company when I was in high school uh, and it was drop shipping computers on eBay of all things, uh, ramped up to about three to 400 laptops a day, uh, having to like hack around the school filter to run the, run the, run the business. But so I, I understood the idea of of it's very, very valuable to capture who your customers are because you can sell to them again. So the idea of leads was important. I scaled that further when I was you know, running JV programs for best-selling authors and speakers, spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on user acquisition, right? So understanding the math behind what a lead is worth was very important. And when I decided I was tired of doing it for other people and wanted to do it for myself, uh, on my blog, there was no, this is you know, a little over a year ago, there wasn't any good option for running a contest with the sole purpose of capturing leads. A lot of them rewarded social actions, but nothing that actually focused on leads. Uh, so I hired a developer, a couple thousand dollars out of pocket, um, and launched this plugin, had no idea how well it would do. I thought if I could make my money back, that would be a win. Well, we went on to sell about 5,000 copies in the first couple of months, and I was like, wow, people actually like this, awesome. <laughs> uh, and I immediately saw that, you know, as a WordPress plugin, it was rather limited because, you know, how many of you have a WordPress blog that has tons of plugins on it? How many of you have a WordPress blog in general? Okay, so even you who didn't raise your hand for saying you have tons of plugins, you're probably liars. No, because <laughs> uh, what we found is there were so many different versions of WordPress people might be on, not updating. There were so many other conflicts that could happen, and it was really outside of our control to give them the best contest experience we knew how. And so we you know, took the funding and, and took the momentum we had and built what we have today, which is a hosted model because we can do some pretty fantastic things in terms of mobile optimized and integration with Facebook, et cetera. So let's just talk about who are contests for because they're not for everybody, but there's a couple key areas that I think can benefit from contests more than others. Uh, the first one is gonna be business to consumer companies. Um, you know, I haven't seen any amazing business to business necessarily contest. That's not saying that it's impossible, but it's a much tougher prize and value proposition to make to ask, you know, a CEO of other companies to enter a contest 
and share his link right, with other CEOs if that's your target demographic. That's not impossible, but it's a lot more difficult. Uh, business to consumer is certainly more friendly for this, especially with the social referral aspect because you, know, you and I might not mind sharing something on Facebook, but you know, it's, it's doubtful Larry Page or Sergey Brin from Google are gonna be doing that, right? Uh, but that being said, this is still useful for all size businesses. Uh, I've seen small you know, brick and mortars benefit from running a contest. You know, some of them, it's the first several hundred people they've ever had on an email list uh, by running a contest at a farmer's market even, you know, like getting them to sign up via an iPad. Um, but obviously up to Fortune 500, Fortune 100, you see the big brands running contests as well because of the engagement that they get out of their users and just you know, rewarding them for being loyal customers. So all sizes can actually benefit. Uh, there's a lot of businesses out there that can benefit from contests when you add more to it. So a lot of times when you have that initial relationship with your customer, you may not have all the information that could be pertinent for what you do. Uh, for instance, you know, let's say you have tons and tons of likes on your page, but you don't know necessarily like the specific zip codes or maybe you wanna start some SMS marketing. These are great ways to add extra variables to your contest so that you can then reach your customers in new unique ways or tailor your marketing campaign to them. Um, and a contest is a great way to get that information out of them. So if, you're, if your lead source could benefit from having more information about your customer, a contest is likely gonna help you out. Um, at the end of the day, it's just basically anyone who can you know, benefit from more leads. One of the mo most common misconceptions that I've kind of felt in the room today, just from various conversations, and you know, it's, it's not you know, hard anyone, I had the same mistake kind of when I was getting going was, you know, we approach social media with, I wanna get more customers, I wanna get more business, right? And we have this kind of false sense of more likes on our Facebook page, it's just going to translate to, well, everyone knows about us, now they're gonna buy from us. And unfortunately, that's not the truth. The truth is, people buy things, not likes. And people only buy things when they can actually communicate with you. And the best way to communicate is still email, right? I mean, how many Facebook status messages do you get a day? Hundreds, thousands? How many, email does, how many emails does even the most busy person in the world get, right? Maybe 100, 150 at most. Most of you, it's probably even less. What channel would you like to fight with for noise to get into the minds and ears of your customers? It's email. So that's how you build that good relationship. Um, and so because of that, I think offline businesses actually have the largest opportunity here because their customers aren't necessarily used to being marketed in this way. So why would you run a contest? You know, like we said, the <laughs> it's about the lead, right? It's not just a cliche. The money is in the list. Um, you know, you run an event, you sell a product, you do a service. Having the ability to manage a large scale list of leads is still the best reason uh, to manage your business online. Second, it's a great incentive to offer up real information. If you win, you wanna know you won, right? They wanna be able to contact you, let you know that you won that awesome trip to Cabo, like my girlfriend did last year, that was awesome. <laughs> uh, put in a fake phone number or a fake email address, you don't know if you win, so it's a great way to get valid information out of your customers. Um, and like we talked about earlier, it has extremely high engagement tolerances because it's actually fun to do. It's a marketing campaign they can participate in. They can get their friends to be a part of and they get rewarded for doing so. Um, you know, they actually love entering contests. The other nice part too is uh, it allows your users to do your selling for you. No one likes to be that guy at the party that says, hey, have you heard about my insurance? Hey, have you heard about what I'm doing? Right, it's really amazing. And uh, there's actually a lot of data that shows uh, that consumers generally don't trust uh, what's coming out of the mouths of the business owner. In fact, they don't care. I mean, beyond testimonials, they just don't trust CEOs. And so what they wanna hear is they wanna hear from your customers. And when you do your prize, if your prize is aligned and you run a good contest, you're actually borrowing the credibility of your customers because they're the ones selling their friends on why you're so amazing, it's not actually you. So when should you run a contest? Um, it's really important to understand that contests or an active campaign, right? You need to have some kind of oversight about when, how long is it going to run, right? It's not an evergreen type thing. There's a start, there's a definite end, and there's, there's different kind of communication you need to, to extend to your customers at the beginning of a contest that's different than the communication at the end. You know, the other, you know, kind of some examples here, 
we have a lot of small businesses that are on our platform that have decided that quarterly contests are a good way for, for them to prepare, adequately prepare, get their prizes together, promote the offer, and then do some follow-up. So once a quarter, so that gives them about a month, you know, uh, a month or two on either end of their contest to actually adequately prepare and do some follow-up. Uh, larger teams, sometimes like radio show, uh, you know, radio, uh, like to run concurrent contests, right? So they might run a contest that's specific to SMS. They might run a contest that's specific to email. Um, and, they, and they benefit from this uh, mostly because they not only have the team size to support running that kind of campaign, uh, but they also have sponsors willing to give them the prizes that are relevant to what they're doing. Um, I, you know, I think a lot of people, when they think contest, they think, I'll do a Christmas contest because I'm giving back to my users. But the reality is, is we all like to be, <laughs> get something back from the businesses that we interact with all year round, right? It's not just a Christmas time. Uh, but it's also a great way to generate buzz before a launch. H how many of you have launched a product before in this room? A couple? You know, there's always like a contest for who can send the most traffic, who can, you know, who can drive the most sales, um, you know, who wants to be a part of the pre-launch video. Contests are, are a good tool to, you know, get that virality immediately if you put a lot of effort into your campaign. So let's just talk about how it works. I know Matt talked about, you know, when he saw it on John Chow's page, uh, which, you know, John Chow actually got several thousand new likes inside of a week. Um, but of course, that's John Chow, right? As his shirt would always tell you. <laughs> um, so essentially, the way it works is you offer a great prize. People can win. They give you their real name and email. You give them an easy shareable link to earn more entries only when that traffic turns into opt-ins. You don't give them points just for the act of sharing. Um, previously, there was a lot of platforms out there that would allow you to essentially give an endless number of social actions that people could take to enter your contest. And when we approached this, we said, well, hmm, that might not be the best way to do it because the people who have the time to do 17 different things across Pinterest and Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn and, 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 and in a lot of cases probably aren't your ideal, your ideal client. They're actually someone who has a lot of time to enter contests and not actually someone who might be a qualified lead. <clears throat> so we wanted to make it a simple process and only reward people that, for you know, the action that helps your business, which is getting you more leads. So you run your campaign, rinse, and repeat. And I, I want to spend a, a fair amount of time on this because I think this is where a lot of people go wrong when they set up their contest, is about picking the right prize. This is really, really critical for, for getting the, the right kind of lead. Uh, you guys heard uh, Nick talk yesterday about Frank Kern, right, giving away the van and how he got a bunch of people who loved vans, but no one who, you know, could care anything about internet marketing and did nothing for his business. It's because he got the prize wrong. There was no alignment with Frank Kern's product or services. <clears throat> a lot of people feel like, oh, if I give away an iPad, that's something that everyone can identify with. That's something that everyone knows is worth about 500 bucks and that most people would want. Uh, but the problem is you get people who want an iPad with or without you know, being qualified for your business. So when we typically work with our customers to create their prizes, uh, we, we generally advise them to do you know, at least three different prize levels, you know, first, second, third place. And you know, they may do something tangible like their product or services that have real cost, <clears throat> but then they may say, well, I can give coaching, but that, that should be towards the end. I mean, that's just my time. Right, that's, no one would, would really want that. They would rather have an iPad with my content or they'd rather have you know, the physical widget that I build. And that's a big mistake because if you're an expert in your industry, you shouldn't devalue your time. And in fact, a lot of times, your audience craves actually reaching out and having that time with you one-on-one. -on -one. So we actually tell a lot of our customers to make their grand prize personal time, something that is almost invaluable. I was talking with someone here last night about golfing. That's his niche. And uh, he said, well, I can give away some clubs. And I said, well, that's good. But you know, what, what's better than that? What, what, can, what can someone in your audience not even buy if there was a price tag that you might be able to negotiate as a bigger brand? Well, the idea I came up with, well, what about time with a pro golfer, right? Really dial in your game, something that's personal, something that no matter how much money your customers have is invaluable. It's an experience. 
that's obviously, that makes a great grand prize. And then a club is a second prize and something, you know, lower down the food chain for third. So the big takeaway here is that perceived value a lot of times is actually more engaging and really fuels your campaign much more than the actual cost of the goods you're giving away. And, you know, beyond that, it actually primes your funnel for a real purchase. Uh, I'm going to give you guys an example here. How many of you heard of Mixergy.com? The interview for ambitious upstarts. Uh, in his example, he, uh, he has a premium service where he charges annually for access to his previous interviews. He interviews uh, the founder of Groupon, uh, Gary Vaynerchuk, a lot of people that you would identify with. And uh, by priming them, by giving away lifetime access to that, what we actually saw was that tons of people who entered the contest didn't want to wait to see if they won and instead went and, and purchased his actual subscription because they didn't want to wait. <clears throat> so let's talk about being Facebook compliant. How many of you have ever seen a brand run a contest where they say, leave a comment and you know, we'll pick one on Tuesday that's going to win? Okay. <clears throat> How many of you have entered a contest that doesn't have a Facebook legal release at the bottom? Probably didn't look for it, but I'm sure there's quite a few. So being Facebook compliant is actually pretty important. Facebook has been very lax in, in enforcing these rules, but they are there, and at any point they could wake up you know, tomorrow morning and decide that if you're not Facebook compliant for contests because they're picking up in popularity, they no longer like what you're doing and you know, potentially even go as far as banning your page. So you need to make sure that you protect yourself, and if you're doing this for clients, you need to make sure that you're still Facebook compliant as well. Um, you know, one of the things that they require is that you use a Facebook app for contests. Um, it, you know, it shouldn't be, you know, just in a status update, et cetera. It needs to be a dedicated app for contests. You know, don't use comments as a form of entry. That's a huge mistake that I see people use almost every single day. Even people that should know better, uh, like in the States, there's a, a company called AppSumo. Anyone heard of AppSumo? I mean, they built their whole list. They built hundreds of thousands of emails using contests. And two weeks ago, I saw them run a contest that wasn't in an app. It was leave a comment. They, they know better. So <laughs> protect yourself, because even, even the big people make the same mistakes. Uh, likes shouldn't boost your entries. They can be a form of unlocking content, but they shouldn't be a form of actually entering a contest. Uh, and then, you know, of course, give Facebook a legal release, because they don't want to be associated with anything outside of their own campaigns. <clears throat> so here's a big discussion that, that people typically ask me for, and, and I know that you know, Matt's had luck with this, and I personally haven't had as much luck, maybe it's just my audience, but uh, you know, there's this idea of to use a light gate or not. And so I guess the, the main question you have to ask here is what's your goal with your campaign? Is your goal to get social proof, or is it your goal to get an email lead? If it's social proof, then of course, no matter what, you know, no matter what the outcome, you want to turn on a light gate because your main goal is to get likes if it's social proof. But if it's not, you have to ask yourself and look at the data, does this help or hurt my results? Um, in my experience, at least, the light gate has added friction. So I've run a couple campaigns uh, to some client sites before uh, that were really adamant about using a light gate. And at least in our tests, they got more likes, but they didn't get more emails. And we knew the ROI of an email lead was very clear. It was actually a pretty high number. But we, the, the ROI of a like in itself was, was pretty nebulous at best. <clears throat> so in our particular case study, uh, you know, the friction can lower conversion. But if you test it, you know, someone like Matt is able to actually get better numbers sometimes. So the real key here is when you make these decisions that significantly affect the flow of your contest, you need to ask yourself what either you or your client's main goal is, and there can only be one. If it's not, I want social proof and I want leads, because social proof is a nice side effect of a good lead generation program. So I told you I'd talk about Mixergy here. Andrew Warner, he's a great guy. Um, has a lot of great content. Uh, I really admire that he's able to get out there every single day and do over an hour long HD interview Get it, you know, uh, get a transcription from it, get it posted, continually just cranks out great content every single day. He has over 800 interviews with some of the best, best entrepreneurs out there. So 
you know, he runs this popular interview blog, and, and he reached out to me, and he says, you know, uh, I've been hearing a lot about contests, but I'm just not sure. You know, I've got my welcome gate on my page. I'm doing all these things that are getting me leads, and I just don't think my, li my, my list is going to enjoy a contest. But everyone says they got to do them, and if I have to do it, I might as well do it with you. So I was like, all right, great, Andrew. Let's, let's get you hooked up. So his main goal, above everything else, was more subscribers because he knew if he could grow his email list, that he would also grow his subscriptions to his, his revenue, right, for, for his site. Because he knew for every person that came in on his list, converted at, an, at X rate, and he made that much money out of it. He didn't really care about Facebook likes. So, you know, of course, his main goal was to sell more subscriptions as a result of getting more leads. <clears throat> and it's true, his list really does hate being marketed to. They are like, don't even market. They they're the kind of people that, you know, go to unroll and take it themselves taken off every list they've ever been put on. So I was like, all right, challenge accepted. So what's the game plan here? So we were gonna give away three lifetime subscriptions to Mixer G Premium, which he doesn't even sell anymore, but when he was selling it, we're $500 a piece, right? So there's, there, we've set the benchmark on what that's worth. We were gonna give one point for every person who entered and 10 points for every person they referred, which is the same way that we did John Chow's contest. He was gonna post on his Facebook wall, on his Twitter feed, and he was gonna mail it out to his existing leads. He surveyed people as they entered the contest with a follow-up email saying, why did you enter and what do you care about gaining from this contest? And what we came up from that is they just wanted to know how he was doing it. They didn't actually care necessarily that much about the prize, they just wanted to know how he was doing it and what it was doing for him. And they were going through the actions and trying to figure out what his marketing plan was. And, and what they wanted was a private Q&A with, with him and myself of how it works and the dynamics behind it. Because they're marketers, they're entrepreneurs, they wanna do the same thing themselves. They knew that even if it didn't work that well on them, so they thought, <laughs> that they could be able to do the same thing for their audience and that's what they were interested in. So this was their unique audience need. So what happened? So, <clears throat> you know, he's got a, a decent list, but like I said, they hate being marketed to. So uh, the clicks were relatively average, but they weren't amazing. So we had uh, over 5,500 people actually enter the contest, of which just over 3,700 were from non-referral leads. So that means they came from his Facebook, his Twitter, or his email list. But inside of a couple weeks, he added almost 2,000 new people to his email list that had never been on his email list before uh, through the referrals that people were you know, tweeting about, sharing on Facebook. And we were seeing all these posts of people that were editing the text and saying, I've been following Andrew Warner for years and I love his stuff. I've never, they would say, I've never posted about Andrew before, but I had to let you know about this because his content is that good. You have to see it. And then we could follow those leads, right? And, you know, a bunch of new Twitter followers and Facebook likes, but we were actually able to follow those leads uh, that, that came through the referrals from the people who said, I've never posted about this before, that turned into a conversion that then actually inside of two weeks later, signed up for his annual subscription when they didn't win. So it was pretty phenomenal to see the people who had never heard of Andrew Warner before, inside of a couple weeks, were now premium paying members. That's kind of the ultimate goal, right? Having this you know, broad overview of a campaign and how it works for you as a business to actually give you more sales, to actually give you more leads, things that you know, improve your bottom line. So I realize not everyone's an Andrew Warner, right? We all start from zero at some point. So I wanted to show you this guy. His name is Anthony Veltri. He lives in Corvallis, Oregon, where the Beavers are, OSU. Uh, and he had absolutely no list. He had no marketing clout. Nobody knew who he was from anybody, okay? The exact same shoes that we've all been at some point. He wanted a local-only audience. He didn't, you know, Andrew Warner is pretty global. But, but this guy wanted local-only audience. He wanted to focus on Facebook traffic to capture and convert leads into his business. And he, you know, he wanted to focus on Corvallis, where he lives, because it was large enough that there was an opportunity, but it was too small for someone like Groupon or Living Social to dedicate their sales team to. But if it's a one-man show, he thought, hey, I have an opportunity here. So what was the plan? He said, okay, I'm gonna run contests for local gift cards Right, of the businesses that I hopefully want to run daily deals for, I'm going to curate their existing coupons and deals they already offer from all the various promotions they're doing, and then you know local newspapers, handouts, 
whatever. He would curate that, and that would be his content until he could strike the first deal. Then he planned to purchase Facebook ads to get exposure to the contest and target the ads just for Corvallis, Oregon within a 10 mile radius. So, you know, this is some borrowed credibility on his end as well because it's a, it's a relatively small, close knit community who could then even go to the business and say, is this guy for real or is he trying to scam me? I mean, do you have this, this gift card? Did he buy it? Can you, can you vouch for him? And they said, yeah, it's a real thing. You should go ahead and enter. It seems cool. You know, he, he's a new customer to the business, right? And, Potential new customer here, hearing about them, seeing the gift card. And so what happened? <clears throat> Inside of several weeks, he generated over 2,300 new Facebook likes, curated an email list of over 2,100 people, out of only 56,000, right? That's a decent percentage of the market. His list consistently now gets an average open rate of 40 to 45%. Any of you who have been in email marketing before know that that's not a bad number. It's sure, certainly better than 16% edge rank, uh, and it's something that he has control over. And not only the opening, but they're actually clicking through on his offers now, uh, you know, with almost a quarter of the people that he sends to clicking through on his new offers because he immediately had local businesses saying, oh my God, everyone's talking about you. How do I, how do I become part of your Corvallis local deals? And so inside of several weeks, he went from absolutely nothing to basically being the dominant player of local deals, businesses begging him to take his ad space, and his customers loving it, opening it, clicking it, and buying. So I thought this was a great example of, of someone who literally went from nothing to essentially a local business that you know, has a viable game plan. Another case study here, this guy, Christian Alva, he's an interesting character. He, uh, he does live music event promotion, right? This is a little different spectrum. Uh, <coughs> He wanted you know, local-centric lists because he wanted to promote local shows in various areas all across the US, you know, various different kinds of you know, music, whether it's uh, you know, electronic dance music, uh, hip hop, whatever. He wanted to be the guy that people went to to promote it. And he had been kind of dabbling in this with a blog and you know, telling his buddies about it and sharing it on Facebook, and maybe buying a couple Facebook ads. But he only had about 800 people on his list before he decided to run contests. He wanted to get 2,000 new leads inside of a year. That was his goal. Pretty, you know, pretty low, right? Set the benchmark kind of low compared to our, our first few people. But he, he thought, okay, I got a limited budget, but I think if I can do 2,000 new leads inside of a year, that'll be good because it, you know, basically triple my list, you know, because he had a, a pretty limited budget. So <clears throat> he decided he was going to use Facebook ads, just like uh, you know uh, Anthony before. And he was going to target based on location and likes of his current business already. He was going to follow up with, with leads for relevant shows, you know, segregate them by the type of music they signed up for, for instance. And he was going to use one primary lead list, though, for the, for the main area. So he asked local bands to sponsor his prizes by saying, hey, give me some extra tickets to your show. Do you have any merchandise? Things like that. Uh, so his prize budget had, you know, was zero because he was giving them you know, exposure. So let's take a look at how he did. He started using contests in April of 2012. This was just on our simple WordPress plugin uh, before, he, before he upgraded. <clears throat> it took him seven months to capture that 2,000 lead mark that he had hoped to hit in a year. But month eight had something very, very special for him. As he, as he finally dialed in his campaigns, he found a sold out show in Vegas that he was able to just buy a few tickets from on StubHub. And so now he had something extremely valuable that was worth more than the face value, right? It was worth more than the $40 or $100 or whatever the tickets were going for because it was exclusive. And what happened? He did a big push with Facebook ads and got 2,100 new leads in a day. He had more leads in one day from this Vegas event than he had captured in the previous seven months because he went for the intangibles, the invaluables, the things that money is hard to get, things that people get excited about. And now his Facebook page has over 11,000 Facebook likes but he has roughly 7,000 people on any given week talking about his page. That's insane for someone who just, it's a local music event promoter. It's not like he's an artist himself. It's not people, I'm listening to Christian Alva right now. It's people talking about his business that promotes events. So this was just like an incredible engagement and got a, a pretty massive list in a very short amount of time, especially once he dialed in getting the right prize. And I know we've talked about webinars before, so this is my last case study here. 
James Wedmore, who's kind of known as like the Video Traffic Academy, he does much of YouTube marketing. He's actually the guy who's the brains of the videos for Lewis Howes and kind of that circle of people. Um, he's a big uh, webinar guy, but you know, YouTube is his thing. So he uses webinars you know, every week or two to engage his audience, talk about how to do marketing on YouTube, and hopefully convert them into a sale at the end, usually a soft sale. And typically his webinars have about 450 people register, right, and about 150 people actually show up to the, to the webinar, right, because he you know, doesn't have the list of Lewis Howells, but it's very respectable. And he does this like day in and day out. He, he almost always gets the same numbers. He has a nice, tight, loyal fan base. So that means he was primed for that tight, loyal fan base to become amazing brand ambassadors. So he and I talked, and he said, okay, I think that contests, if you, if you connect contests with webinars, you can do something interesting here. So we set up a contest page that actually doubled as a webinar page, where similar to what Nick said for his example, uh, which was, please register for my webinar, and you'll also be entered into this contest where I'm giving away, number one, a large prize, uh, a, you know, large training prize. He was also giving away some hardware and some access to his courses, <clears throat> but you had to be present on the webinar to win. And as he went through the webinar, because I listened to it, he gave away the first prize right at the gate, like, hey, I'm glad you guys all are here. We're gonna get started. Let's give away third place prize right off the bat. Halfway through the webinar, he says, I'm really glad you're still listening. Uh, I know a lot of you guys are, you know, have purchased my products in the past. I wanna give someone access right now to my, my next product. And then at the end of the webinar, after his pitch, he, he announced the winner for his you know, $10,000 one-on-one training for several day package. And he mailed it to his existing audience. He didn't spend anything in ad budget at all. The same exact list that typically had 450 people register and about 150 people show up had some pretty interesting results. Immediately, <laughs> he only promoted this for like two days. He immediately had almost 1,200 people register for his webinar from the same list that he'd been doing for months. He had about 600 people show up live, right? So that's what, almost a 40% improvement of people who showed up compared to who even registered the time before. And his sales conversion stayed constant. He converted at the same 20%, just like he did with all of his times before, except for now he had a lot of fresh faces. Uh, new interested leads, new likes, new follows, but more importantly, the new email list, and in this case, lots and lots of sales. So, you know, in this particular case, uh, it worked out quite well. So if you use webinars, it's worth, you know, considering, can I run a contest to boost my attendance rates, to boost my engagement, and to let my loyal fan base, you know, speak the good word for me? So I know a handful of you, how many of you in here do client work? That's kind of what I thought. Okay, so, <laughs> uh, you know, a lot of times your clients say, well, what's this gonna do for me? Where's the ROI? You know, I'm hiring you, what are you doing for me? How do, you know, why should I run a contest? Why should I give away my stuff? People should pay me for that. That's a big mistake. <clears throat> but one thing you wanna start right off the bat is asking them what is your main goal, right? Because we talked about there can only be one goal. That's just the way things are. There can be one number one goal, the other thing could be a side effect. So, you know, if that goal is social proof, then maybe you design a campaign around creating social proof. But that has to be the primary goal. If they, if they say, I want social proof, and the campaign ends, and they say, where are my email leads? Say, hey, you wanted social proof. We got you however many new likes. If they say, my main goal is email leads because the main thing I'm interested in is more, more business, more sales, then be very, very clear about how you're gonna do that and what the difference in the campaign is gonna be and you know, how you can translate that into actual business objectives. Um, you know, I'm a firm believer based on many, many campaigns. We have about 8,000 people who use our software at this point. And after taking a look at all those different campaigns, almost everyone gets a nice bump in social, even if they're focusing on leads. So to me, that's the ultimate balance of vanity and performance. We all in this reptilian brain of ours, our ego wants a little bit more, right? We want a few more likes, we want a few more Twitter followers. Like he asked at the beginning of the conference, if you didn't know how many likes you had on your page, would you care? Right, that was a great quote. And this, it's really true, I mean, we care, it's a game, everything's gamed. So if you do it right for leads, and you just can put away the vanity for a minute, then it will be a nice side effect 
kind of your core business objective. So, you know, just make sure you and the client have a, a mutual understanding of what you're trying to accomplish. And I really can't say this enough because how many of you have had a customer who just said, I want this and this and this, and the list keeps going on of all the things they want, and at any given moment, whatever the most important thing to them is in the campaign changes. Anyone had that? Only two people have had that? <laughs> okay, okay. Be, be very, very clear with your clients. There can only be one goal. What is their goal? If it has anything to do with sales or leads, boom, you nailed it. If it's social proof, be like, ah, you sure? You sure it's social proof? Because you will get some of that, but is that your main goal? Do you just want more likes? Can you take likes to the bank? I can't, can you? No. So be very, very clear about that. So what are some of the takeaways of, of what you can do with the contest? You know, they're, they're amazing for generating leads, like I keep saying. They also are amazing for social proof, even if that's not your primary goal. Our tools are set up in such a way, and a lot of other platforms are now too, go figure, um, to where social proof is a nice benefit. 